Here we have an agent powered by Claude and Langchain. We can chat with it just like we would with ChatGPT. This agent even has memory. You can see it remembers my name. Okay, let's now ask this LLM agent something very specific and see how it does. I'm going to ask about a weekly meetup in Miami called GP Tuesday that I've been attending over the past year to help me learn more about AI. I'll say, I missed the last GP Tuesday meetup. I'd like a recap of what was discussed. The outputs of LLMs like Claude are only based on the data they were trained on, and we can see that the version of Claude we're using hasn't been updated since June 2024. I'm recording this two months after June 2024 in August, so there's no chance Claude would know the specifics of last week's GP Tuesday meetup. In the next demo, we're going to combine this LLM agent with the use of vectors. Here we have an LLM agent that I've called the GP Tuesday agent. Unlike the previous agent, this one uses RAG. RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation, is a technique that combines the use of an LLM with the use of a vector database. Here's how it works. The only prerequisite for using RAG is collecting some accurate data regarding the domain that we want the LLM agent to focus on. For our use case, I've generated 40 Q&As related to the GP Tuesday meetup that we will convert into vectors and then upload to Pinecone. I'm storing these Q&As in a text file with one Q&A on each line. We could just as easily have recorded these Q&As in a Google spreadsheet, but I prefer text files. Anyways, here is a snippet of code that will A, read the Q&As one by one, B, convert each Q&A into a vector using a free embedding model provided by Hugging Face called All Mini LM L6 V2. I have this embedding model running in my Google Cloud account. And C, upload the resulting vectors to Pinecone with metadata that includes the original question and answer each vector represents. After we run this script and see our vectors in Pinecone, we can start doing RAG. Before we run this script though, we have to create the database and database index that will hold our vectors. To create a Pinecone database, all we have to do is sign up on pinecone.io and create a project. I will call the project we will use full stack vectors. After creating the project, we then have to create what is called an index. A Pinecone index is where we can store vectors or records. For our index, we'll use the default cosine similarity algorithm and specify that our vectors will have 384 dimensions. As our embedding model, all mini LM L6 V2 generates vectors with 384 dimensions. Different embedding models, which are just types of neural networks, will generate different size vectors for representing the data being passed through them. You can call your indexes whatever you like, but I like to call my indexes after the embedding models being used to generate the vectors they will hold. Now that we have our vector database and index set up, let's run the script to ingest our data. Notice that we now have 80 vectors in our index, which is double the amount of Q&As we had in our file. This is expected as we are generating a vector for each question and each answer so that we can match against either half of a Q&A. Now we can try retrieval augmented generation. Let's send this message to the GP Tuesday agent. I missed the last GP Tuesday meetup. I'd like a recap of what was discussed. Now we're getting responses that are more catered to our domain. Here is a diagram walking us through what just happened. One, we sent some prompt to our agent. Two, our prompt got converted into a vector. Three, we searched our Pinecone knowledge base for the vectors that are most similar to the vector representing our prompt and Pinecone returned to us the original data represented by the highest matching vectors. Four, we combined the most relevant data to our prompt with the original prompt and sent that to our LLM. And five, we returned our final output. Two business use cases I can think of for RAG agents would be one, generating social media content, AKA create vectors representing your highest performing posts and work with a RAG agent to generate new material in your style. And two, drafting emails, text messages, or any other forms of correspondence, AKA create vectors representing your communication history and have a RAG agent automatically draft responses to save you time. We will now show how you can use a reason and act or react agent for accessing multiple knowledge bases using Pinecone. The first knowledge base we will use will hold vectors representing Q and A's related to the famed Miami based weekly AI meetup, GP Tuesday. And the second knowledge base we will use will hold vectors representing Q and A's related to me, yours truly. Let's ingest our knowledge. Here is a script that will A, 
read in a batch of Q&As, B, convert each Q&A into a vector using a free embedding model provided by Hugging Face, all mini LM, L6, V2, and C, upload the resulting vectors to Pinecone along with metadata that includes the original question and answer each vector represents. Pinecone allows us to partition the vectors held inside of a single database index into groups called namespaces. So what we'll do is upload the first batch of vectors representing data related to the Miami-based meetup, GP Tuesday, into a namespace or group called GP Tuesday, and upload the second batch of vectors representing data related to me, yours truly, into a namespace or group called TAD. Both of these groups of vectors will sit inside of the same database index. First, let's upload the Q&As related to GP Tuesday. <laughs> And second, let's upload the Q&As related to Tad, a.k.a. me. Now that we've ingested the data for our two knowledge bases, we should see some vectors as well as some namespaces inside of our index. Let's now test out our React agent. When we ask our agent about the GP Tuesday meetup, we want relevant info from the GP Tuesday namespace to be returned. And when we ask about Tad, AKA me, we want relevant info from the Tad namespace to be returned. Let's say, tell me about GP Tuesday. Notice the bold black text below the message loader that indicates which group of vectors is being accessed. That looks good. Let's now say, tell me about Tad. That also looks good. Let's walk through what's happening here. One, we send some prompt to our agent. Two, the LLM powering our agent will decide if this prompt is related to any supported knowledge bases. If it's not, the LLM returns directly. If it is though, we continue. Three, we convert our input prompt into a vector. Four, we compare the vector representing our input prompt against the vectors in any knowledge bases the LLM has decided as being relevant and retrieve the original data represented by the highest matching vectors. Five, we combine all retrieved data with the original prompt and send that to our LLM. And finally, in six, we receive the final output from the LLM and return that to whomever is using our agent. React agents are powerful and can be expanded to search across many knowledge bases. Two business use cases I can think of for React agents would be one, customer relationship management, where each group of vectors is associated with a particular customer for generating individualized sales, marketing, and support scripts. And two, higher education, where each group of vectors is associated with a course offered by an institution so that students approved to take the course have course material available at their fingertips. Full stack vectors, pinecone edition, GP Tuesday edition, 305 edition, like, share, comment, subscribe edition.